Did you know that we only use about 10% of our brains? Now my bet is that you probably heard this before. Even if you don't like remember it, this fact is very popular. You've heard this. Uh, we only use 10% of our brain. You know how they say we only use 10% of our brains? I think we only use 10% of our heart. It got mentioned and even inspired complete movies. 10% may not seem like much, but it's a lot if you look at all we've done with it. Sadly, it's also a lie. And not just a lie. It's like a pretty big lie, but not for the reasons that you might think. Hello friends and family, my name is Capabyte. I occasionally talk about psychology, it's been a while. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most popular myths of our entire science. And it's one of the most interesting ones because it gives such a cool like insight into like why do we even say this, where did it come from, why is it a thing? Well turns out it goes back quite a while, like 1890 quite a while to be exact. There was this very important man, his name is William James. He's considered to be the father of the American psychology as we know it today. Now to be clear, he didn't say that humans use only 10% of their brains. What he did say was that humans only use a fraction of their mental potential. However, he didn't really bother to explain why or how. He just dropped this one. Now, if you heard anything about psychology at all, you know about Dr. Freud, right? And he's, his influence was kind of sorta in this time period as well. He used to talk a lot about the unconscious, which is the principle that we don't really know everything that we think about. We have a lot of things going on in our brains that we don't have access to. Now, what you need to understand is that the idea that we only use 10% of our brain is not the same thing as saying that we don't have access to 90% of what our brains do. The 10% brain implication would be that we only ever use 10% of our physical matter. And you might be asking yourself, but do we even have like dead zones in our brains? Glad you asked, viewer I made up. Now this is where it gets really interesting. A neurosurgeon called Wilder Penfield discovered what he called the silent cortex, which were areas that did not respond to electrical stimulation. In case you don't know, by the way, the brain is constituted of neurons which are stimulated by electricity. A lot of the research that was made in the beginning of the 20th century was literally just plugging electrical power to a brain and seeing what it did. And that's how you found out what a brain area was for. And he found out these dead zones, which was pretty much just evidence that we had some parts of our brains that didn't do anything. What we came to find out later was that that's not what they really were. It's not that they didn't do anything, it's just that they didn't do anything that you could directly observe. If you look into brain lesions, any kind of damage that you do to the brain has a kind of consequence to the patient, which means that every part of the brain serves some kind of purpose, right? Here is the catch though. The fact that they found out these dead zones turned out to be way more interesting to people than maybe they anticipated. It was like in every other self-help book, it was just out of control. One of those pieces of information, or in this case, this information, that everyone just loved. There's a very popular example that is the World Almanac of the beginning of the 1900s, and it claimed that there is no limit to what the human brain can accomplish. Scientists and psychologists tell us that we use only about 10% of our brain power. It's funny though that every time that the theory gets spread, like, it adds a little bit to it, so I guess the World Almanac just added that 10% over there, even though there was no basis for that number. There there is this theory in social psychology called the confirmation bias. When we have a motivation to believe in something, we selectively look for things that confirm our initial view and we refute those things that we don't agree with so that we keep the same belief as time goes on. And this happens in a way that's actually a bit counterintuitive because we tend to think that because we don't want to believe something, we just avoid it. But that's not really what we do. What we do is way more interesting, which is the opposite actually. We look at what we want to disagree with for longer than what we want to agree with. So we essentially get the impression that we're being like more thorough, but in reality, we're just confirming our views. But why am I saying all this? Well, the point is that if a lot of people want to believe something, they will believe something. Doesn't matter what comes along, doesn't matter if the initial idea is just countered altogether, they'll just keep believing it. Getting something into our heads is way easier than getting it out. At this point, the theory was strong, but it was about to get like really strong. If you've heard of the book, How to Make Friends and Influence People, it was written like a hundred years ago and it's still popular. See, the 
original preface of this book was written by another psychologist. His name was Dale Carnegie. And he actually wrote that Professor William James of Harvard used to say that the average man develops only 10% of his talent mental ability. Now, I certainly don't have to tell you, this just wasn't true at all. Like there was no source to what he just said. And Professor William James just didn't say that ever. But it didn't matter because the book got published and it got popular very popular. See folks, that was the story of how Professor William James of Harvard got associated with one of the most preposterous claims simply because someone forgot the source. Now thankfully for William James is that people also forget the source nowadays, so he's not associated with the claim anymore. <laughs> oh, and by the way, we do know that the 10% number is just insane. We have fMRIs now, we have PET scans, we can just observe people's brain. We just know that people use way more than 10% of our brains, even at a time. So apparently, there are no hidden features that we don't know about and are waiting to be uncovered, like telekinesis or stuff like that. And what would be the next stage? Well, the next stage would probably be control of other people. But the brain is still interesting, if for nothing else, because it does all of these like quirky little things like forgetting the source and still remembering like misinformation, which is just, just great. As a social psychologist, this is even more interesting than if we did really use just 10% of our brain. So there you go. I hope you enjoy this little factoid as much as I do. If you're interested about the brain and what it actually does, click on this video right here where I talk about a book that I really enjoy by Robert Sapolsky. See you next week.